there are mainly two types of organs in immune system first primary lymphoid organ and second secondary lymphoid organ actually the main role of primary lymphoid organ is to educate the cells for understanding what is self and what is non self self should be always protected and non self should be always destroyed and from that point of view the primary education which is given by primary lymphoid organ is the most essential the very first primary lymphoid organ is bone marrow of course other than that thymus is also a primary lymphoid organ inside the bone marrow there is hematopoietic stem cell and in the last lecture of hematopoiesis we have seen how the hematopoietic cell stem cell gives rise to myeloid progenitor as well as lymphoid progenitor and from that complete or all the cells of blood are synthesized but other than that bone marrow is a fat deposit with age the fat deposit in bone marrow keep on increasing at uh, uh, the age of 60 approximately 50% of the bone marrow is replaced with fat though bones are hard from outside inside the long bones of our body like humerus like femur such long bones are having a soft spongy matter inside it which is dark brown in color and that matter is the bone marrow now if we will take because here we have shown a uh, ts that is transverse section of the femur and in that you can see this outer lining is the endostilmich while the this lining the inside it that is actually the bone marrow part which is present inside it is actually the perivascular niche so two the main compartments are there endostil and perivascular other than that inside the bone marrow the actual cells of the bone marrow are the stromal cells and there are mainly five types of stromal cells you can observe inside the bone marrow suppose this is the bone and if we'll cut it like this then this portion which we are observing this in the long bone is will be referred as the bone marrow and in that you can see the cells which are present are the stromal cells which are the actual cells in the bone marrow and in that we have endothelial cells you can see this is the blood vessel because inside the bone marrow it is highly vascularized because there is a big or there is a huge blood supply this is a main blood vessel which is present at the center of the bone marrow so if we will cut a bone like this exactly at the center we will find a major a uh, blood vessel and other than that some other blood vessels might also be seen but the lining of the blood vessel is formed by endothelial cell these are the first cell then other than that you have perivascular cells which are exactly present besides the uh, endothelial cells you can see these are the cells their work is to ex give extra protection to this other than that you can see sympathetic nerves this is a neuron and you can see this is a sympathetic neuron and that's why because of such many sympathetic neurons all the cells in the bone marrow are stay connected with each other as well as with the nervous system then there are macrophages you can observe these are the macrophages these are the phagocytic cells in the bone marrow and these macrophages are actually the permanent resident macrophages in the bone marrow generally referred as osteoclasts and osteoblast these actual cells which have formed the lining of the bone which are facing inside the bone marrow are actually called osteoblasts these are the cells which are there but other than that don't forget bone marrow is the main site of hematopoiesis and that's why inside it there are hematopoietic stem cells are present and these hematopoietic stem cells are constantly dividing to form progenitor cells either myeloid or lymphoid and other than that so many cytokines and growth factors are present inside it which are going to regulate the complete process of hematopoiesis in case of any infection the innate immunity cells they release more cytokines 
these cytokines and signaling molecules will reach the bone marrow through blood and in that they will stimulate the hematopoietic stem cell for more hematopoiesis because generally when there is no challenge for by pathogen we call it steady state and homeostatic condition because there is no challenge so hematopoiesis is taking place at a slower rate and all the hematopoietic stem cells inside it most of the hematopoietic stem cells remain dormant or quiescent but some of them keep on forming but in case of any infection they form more hematopoietic uh, stem cells and more amount of hematopoiesis inside that b lymphocytes are also synthesized and not only synthesized they are trained to become mature who is giving this training the training is mainly given by the stromal cells which are present inside these uh, bone marrow various types of stromal cells they in combination with each other give this type of training now consider any cell that is uh, we are representing this as a stromal cell and no doubt it being a cell of our body it will have mhc class 1 on its surface and this in this mhc class 1 they will always represent an antigen and this antigen which is a self antigen that is the antigen of our body it will be shown to the b lymphocyte that is b cells with the maturing b cells still it is not matured and the b cells through its antibody will join to it and will understand whether this is our self antigen if the b lymphocyte will fail to match uh, to understand the difference between self and non self because it should not show any activation against self but it should show activation against non self if it will fail to show such uh, such self and non self understanding then it will be immediately killed by the stromal cells or by the uh, macrophages which are present inside the a bone marrow they will immediately kill such b lymphocyte but if any b lymphocyte is showing perfect understanding of self means it is not showing any activation against self antigen these b lymphocytes will move towards maturity and such b lymphocytes are released into the blood through the same blood vessels so stromal cells will interact with b cells they also release certain cytokines which are required for maturation of b lymphocytes and other than that uh, uh, maximum maturation of these b lymphocytes takes place in the bone marrow itself and when they come out of bone marrow they are still capable of recognizing self and non self but further maturation takes place final stages in the maturation takes place in the spleen in case of birds the bursa of fabricius is there and in that because if birds flying birds will have hollow bones and that's why in the bursa of fabricius hematopoietic stem cell is present and hematopoiesis is taking place other than that b cell maturation also takes place in the bursa of fabricius most of the b lymphocytes while taking the training of self and non self are killed because they forget to recognize the difference between self and non self and only those will come out which are having the ability to understand the difference between self and non self so this is all about the main primary lymphoid organ the first primary lymphoid organ that is bone marrow a site of hematopoiesis as well as b cell maturation thank you